Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to talk about the importance of the end of each session. When you end the game, what happens at this point, right? And I want to explain to you why it is absolutely critical and far more important than you really imagine this end time, right? Literally, the game is over. The session is over. Um, and you're like, and, and I actually even say it. I like, and scene. Right, and I'm like, thanks for playing in this particular session, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Right, and and at this point, there, what's going to happen is going to last. It should last no less than 15 minutes, and it sh it might last an hour and a half. Right, and I cannot tell you how important this end of a physical game time is. It's really important. Okay. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna take you on a little bit of a journey to explain you how I learned this. All right, so let's go. All right, so I have just finished my first year as an IRL church elder. I was elected as an elder. I and then as soon as I was no, I was nominated as an elder, and then as soon as I was nominated, the church was like, "Hey, you got to do a whole bunch of forms, and are you up for this? And you know, and you're gonna have." You have to talk to people, and like, and you're going to be elected, or people are going to be like, "Ah, oh, there's no way we want Skyrock Garibay to be an elder in this church, right?" So basically, um, I was then elected as an elder, and now I've finished a, for a year as a church elder. What did I accomplish? I'm going to shock you. I was shocked, right? What is the biggest thing I accomplished as a church elder? Well, I never expected it. I would have never known that this would be what I, you know, my biggest accomplishment as a church elder. But one of the things I did was I was in a church elder for about six months, and I and I go to the meetings. I do everything that an elder is expected to do. We take care of the administration of the church, and we make really critical decisions, right? And but one thing is, I I was at church, and I realized uh, about a year, year, about almost two years ago now, we built a brand new lobby in our church, right? We actually blew out a wall. We had we used to have a mezzanine. We used to have like a you know like a like a an upper lobby where you could watch from the. And we blew out the mezzanine, we blew out walls, and we blew out literally the back three pews, right? And we made this gigantic lobby. And the reason why was before we did this, everybody was jammed in the lobby at the end, and it was uncomfortable, and people were like you couldn't hear each other talk. It was a mess, right? So we we spent quite a bit of money, and we built this incredible lobby, right? So we built this incredible lobby, and I realized our our service ends at eleven forty five, and then by twelve fifteen, the deacons were shutting off the lights and turning off the music. Sometimes as early as twelve oh five, right? And everybody was like, and we didn't realize it. I recognized it. I recognized it. Nobody else in the church recognized it. I was like, oh my gosh, we're kicking people out, right? The moment the lights go off and the moment the music goes off. They're taking that as a visual trigger to leave. And they did. So I just went to the elders and I said, I have this idea. I want to spin it up as a program. I'm going to do it for three months. I'll take the responsibility for three months. I'm going to stay in the church until 1 p.m. And nothing else will change. We'll lock up all the doors because the doors lock from the inside. You can just walk out on a push bar, right? We'll lock up. The only thing that's not going to... The, the deacons will keep doing every job they do. They'll lock up the church. They'll put everything away. But we're going to leave the lights on and we're going to turn and we're leave the music on. And I'm going to stay till 1 p.m., right? And that way everybody gets the time they need to talk, right? Now, what, what blew me away was at first it went till about 1220. Then people were staying until 1230. Now we are kicking people out at 1 almost every week, right? And people stay and they talk to families that they can't see throughout the week. They talk to their own families who they don't get to see. We were show, There are incredibly important conversations that ha happen in the end, and there are very unimportant conversations happening. In the end. Just fun jokes, telling, talking about the game, whatever. And it's been massively successful, and the church loves it, and everybody loves it. It's something I spun up. I took the responsibility myself, and it's been hugely successful, right? And, and it's gotten the whole the church a whole bunch of goodwill that you would have never expected, right? And what I want to tell you is the minute you close your game, there's something special that's happening, right? People are going to stay for 15 minutes and they might talk about the Eagles losing the Super Bowl, right? Or they might say, they might tell you just some troubles they're having at their work, right? 
Or they'll tell you about a book they're excited about, the Dungeons and Dragons book they're excited about, or even a movie they're excited about, right? Or they might say, I was just diagnosed with cancer, and now you're going to be there for an hour and a half, right? As somebody who you caught, you know, who you're supposed to be just cutting goblins in half with, now you have a life experience with them, right? And your friendship means far more than it did before, right? And this and this brings up major, major questions, right? So one, I run two-hour games, and the reason why is so at the end of that game, when that game ends, right, if it goes another hour and a half, I'm not jamming in an hour and a half that's needed at the end of the game to talk to a human being and interact with a human being and be real with a human being when we've already been there for four, four and a half hours, right? That extra two hours may get filled with something you never expected it to be filled with. Friendship, kindness, tolerance, right? And, and just, or even a brotherhood, a sisterhood of of meaning and purpose. That time is so valuable, right? And I've seen this in the church, right? That when you have a community, right? And your table is a tiny little community. That community is going to relate in different ways than you ever expected, right? Far more than you ever expected. Do not sleep on how important that end time is and what ha- what is happening there. You're giving people who do not have a chance to see each other throughout the week sometimes time to see each other in ways that they never did before. And life-changing conversations can happen in that time. Every single make sure you are really prioritizing the end of each of your physical table Dungeons and Dragons games. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion. When you get in the comments and send your traffic, or when you respond to this video with a video, right? That would be welcome as well. Please consider liking and subscribing. Have a wonderful millennium.